Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. You got money. <laughs> from Hollywood Unlocked. You might know him from there. Jason Lee. Welcome, What's up? sir. Welcome Man, back. I'm Jason got back. a bag. Yo, and Angela's here. Yeah, Bad I wasn't here was when here. you were here before. But again, thank you, Jason Lee, for actually giving the Breakfast Club an award. Of course. When you had your ceremony. So if you want to just, you know... Tell us what that was all about. Yeah, so uh, I had told the story at the at the brunch that I was on MTV and VH1 and at, and uh, applied to go to the MTV Awards, and then motherfuckers told me I couldn't come. So I was like, how is it that I'm on the network and can't come? So I went and created my own award show, mm-hmm. the Hollywood Unlocked Social Impact Brunch. So when we were going through the list of you know people who are important to us, of course the Breakfast Club was at the top of the list. So the Breakfast Club got the Culture Award. We just got the name plays back, so we'll be sending that in the mail soon. What's that iHeart bag though like? You know, first of all, <laughs> round of applause to Jason Lee. Congratulations. Four thank years, you, you've been you. building Hollywood Unlocked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, now it's nationally syndicated. Man, look, last time I was here, I said, uh, and I said it a few times because I wanted people to get it. I remember back before entertainment, I worked at the union. They used to say it takes 17 times for people to hear something for it to stick. So I kept saying how important the Breakfast Club was a culture, how, how important the Breakfast Club was a culture, how, and I kept saying that over and over. And that this uh, interview was an important part of that journey because I feel like people actually really see you when mm-hmm. you're here. And uh, what I do, want, I want to shout Charlemagne because as soon as we walked out, he got on the phone and hit the folks up at our heart and said, hey, we need to figure out something with Jason. Next day I was on a call and here I am, nationally syndicated. What's that bag like though? Uh, the bag is really I didn't nice. want to text you and ask you. I wanted to wait to see well, you. This is what I will say. You got I a different heart, cologne on. I know that much. He has Versace. Hey! I, heart, I, heart, <laughs> I, I look at DJ Envy's Instagram. I got goals. <laughs> I, I will say the thing I love about iHeart, you know, white folks pay on time. I, they called me about the check. They were like, are you ready for the wire? I'm like, are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. So, uh, yeah, thank you, iHeart. Now tell us about had, the show for people that don't know. And how a, long had you been talking to iHeart before the deal actually happened? So they had approached us about the podcast and said, hey, you know, we want to figure out how to, you know, work with you and bring the podcast over. I'm like, have you ever watched it? That shit is messy and reckless and this and that or whatever. And uh, so we had been talking about the podcast, but then the syndicated thing just came out of nowhere and we figured that out. Which is Those a two-hour show, right? Is a countdown show? Explain two- to people who, who don't yeah. know what it is. Okay, so Hollywood Unlocked, you know, we, we say we're the post of pop culture. We talk, mm-hmm. you know, reckless, interview uh, a lot of the different people that are out there in the, in the business, both on the on the pop culture side and, you know, white side. But we also talk to, you know, folks who are part of uh, hip-hop. So the two-hour show is going to basically be us uh, interviewing people that you know and asking the craziest questions. Like that nigga Antoine Fuqua, I want him right now. Uh, <laughs> the other day he sent me a cease and desist letter. I get sued. No. Now I'm getting sued more after this interview. Matter of yeah. fact, because you asked me if I'm getting sued, yeah. now they think it's just a gateway to send me well, lawsuits. Why, why did he send you a cease and desist? Well, you know, Antoine Fuqua, uh, uh, you know, he's in the news because he was out there messing around with his family friend, Nicole Murphy. Mm-hmm. And so, just a friendly kiss. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was like Jordan Woods sitting on Tristan's lap. That's the thing in Hollywood, mm-hmm. right? Or, or Charlamagne sitting on Wendy Williams' lap. Just, just. That was years ago. Man, I can't wait for that reunion. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Apparently, uh, we had dug up some receipts. I guess he had a kid or something on his wife some time ago, allegedly. So mm-hmm. there's these court documents. Really? Yeah, there's these court documents, and so we put it up, and so he doesn't want us to talk about them. But I'm like. My nigga, if you was just focusing on movies and not cheating on your wife, none of us would be paying attention to you. Black men don't cheat. But, but, black, but black grown people boys People also do. want to yeah. know what's going on behind the scenes with that relationship because did they have some type of open relationship? Was Because it feels like he's been cheating for a while and this just was a big blow up once the pictures came out and everything. Yeah, I mean, and that's the greatest, greatest part about what we do on our show too is we do look at different angles. I mean, it is mm-hmm. Hollywood. Maybe they have an arrangement. Maybe they have an open relationship. But I think if it was open and Leela was okay with it, she wouldn't have, you know, she wouldn't have deactivated her Instagram. That's not true. Away. I can why? tell you why. Because imagine if you already have that understanding with your husband. Uh-huh. He gets caught out there publicly, but then everybody starts coming to your page shitting on you. You might just get deleted because you don't want that heat. And or you might say it can be open, but please don't embarrass me. Yeah, but Some the people en- say that. Do not embarrass me. Man, engagement rate goes up. I'm all for it. We might cheat on it just to play around. But here's the deal. I think that I still feel like, you know, with Leela taking the hit that she did and people fat shaming mm-hmm. her because she's a little chunkier than Nick uh, Nicole, he should have been a man and stepped out there and stuck up for his woman. Right. I just he think he's pathetic. If you had a choice between interviewing Leela or, or Antoine Fuqua, who would you rather interview? Uh, Leela, because then we can just shit on him the whole interview. But I'm <laughs> going for the fireworks, though. Is it? What does that mean? 
the fireworks, like in the studio. You and Antoine going back and forth? Oh, Lila yeah. will probably be honest, though. Yeah. We get sunshine first. It's sunshine, right? Sunshine. Yeah, we get sunshine first, and then we just make him so mad that he has to come, and then we interview him, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trash him the whole interview. <laughs> now, what makes Melissa Ford and Damage the perfect team for y'all to be on the next level? I think Damage is, like, the key to the radio yeah. piece of it. Yeah. Damage knows the mechanics. You know, he used to be at iHeart. We heard yes. your shout-out uh, the other day on the radio. Thank you. Uh, he had been here and, uh, I guess, left iHeart. He just is the right fit, you know, young, black, uh, single father out there really hustling in Hollywood. I've respected his grind since the Revolt days when he went over to power uh, to a 92.3. Uh, he was great on the radio. I love behind the scenes. He's very supportive. Mm -hmm. He's very professional and he really does believe in the vision. And that was important in adding him to the show. Melissa. I mean, y'all know Melissa. There's mm -hmm. I mean, she's just Melissa Ford, you know, right. um, so. I just think it just felt right. And, you know, we had had a conversation about, you know, I, I want to do TV. I want to do all types of other, other things. But, like, for radio, I don't feel comfortable if Melissa's not sitting next to me. Because right. she just, she, I'm able to just you vibe off of her. Off of her. Yeah. yeah. Melissa's yeah, super about smart. Melissa, and people it, yeah. don't give her that credit because they just look at her as a face, a body. But she's super intelligent. Melissa can write. Yeah. Uh, she is great at reporting on stories. I worked with her at Sirius. Mm -hmm. So she has her background in radio as well. And she's a known person, too for such a long time in this business and in this industry. So I'm happy to see this all happening for her. Yeah, and, she's, and she stands on her own. You know what I mean? Anytime somebody comes in, the first thing, especially if it's a, 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 a male, the first thing they say is, man, I used to, yeah, I know you used to masturbate to her. I know. To or if it's a woman like mm -hmm. a Bernice Burgos or something, they say, oh, or Amber Rose, yo, we used to look up to you, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody went the original body route, but they at least had goals, you know, to aspire to. Yeah, I don't think guys should walk up to girls and say stuff like that. <laughs> it's like, crazy. That's a thought you could keep to yourself. Yeah. I'll tell you other homeboys, I don't think that's a good... Hey, you know, I used to jerk off to you. Now, you also gave Melissa <laughs> an award at your at the brunch yeah. that you had for Hollywood <laughs> sure. Unlocked, and she cried, and it was a surprise award for Yeah, her. you know, because the one thing I will say is uh, we had interviewed Jennifer Lewis, and, you know, you guys have interviewed Jennifer Lewis. Mm -hmm. She's the best, right? So she was talking about her story, bipolar disorder, and Mar uh, Melissa got really emotional in that interview, you know, because I feel like for her, she's always balancing being this this um, thing that people objectify, you know, sexually, and then how smart she is and how grounded she is in her blackness. And I think that people really hold her to a different standard. And so for me, when she got in the car accident and we had a lot of private conversations about, you know, value, self-value, mm -hmm. uh, perceived value, it was important for people to know how much we valued her. Mm -hmm. Now, when is the show premiere? Uh, August 17th, the day the after my birthday. Boy, they did not waste no time. Nah, right up <laughs> what? Now, he what? Said wait, wait, can I just say one I heard, thank you so much. Y'all move so fast. They and do. the check comes early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what Was there any other offers on the table? Any other situations? You don't have to say the names. Well, we had been talking to people. And I think, you know, the fact that I heard decided to take a risk. And, you know, I, I first thing I said to them before the wire came was, what do you, what do you want me to polish up? Because I'm sure there's some shit you want me to clean up. They were like, nah, don't change. If there's any notes, we'll give them to you like we give to Charlemagne. I said, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Notes? They ain't never gave me no notes. <laughs> I'm just, that was a joke. Oh, that was a joke. Relax. <laughs> that, that's what I would say. I, I said on this platform, I, I, they have never told us don't say anything, don't have this guest, nothing at all. Yeah. Right? Nothing that I can remember. None. Nothing. None. Now, do you, are you, I wasn't here when you came to the Breakfast Club yeah. last time, but is it ever a concern for you when you have relationships with somebody, reporting on stories about them? Has that ever been an issue for you? No, like you saw, like, so I'm back on Love and Hip Hop. I know everybody's like, why did you go back to Love and Hip Hop? That's so, you I know. I thought you wasn't going to do it. Well, the bag was right. A lot um, of bags. And, and, it's me about his bag. Well, bro. let me say this. The bag was right. I was, shout out to Mona and Big Fish. They did a great job with that. But also, I like the fact that this season, they're at, Big Fish is, you know, they do uh, Black Ink uh, mm -hmm. Crew. They actually are shooting real shit, you know. So, Black Ink Compton, right? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah, so they're, they're it's a... It, the show is more real to me. It's more authentic. They're telling a real story. My brother who was murder, uh, murdered when I was 19, that was a real important part of my life. I think it's an important part of people getting to know who I am. So when they approached me and said, we'd love to tell that story, and then the money was right, I was like, of course. So I say that to say, last night's episode, I had to confront A1 about uh, his cheating on Lyric Anderson. And yeah, it was uncomfortable, but it is. I mean, I'm gonna put it up, and you're gonna run into me anyway, so I might as well just tell you. You know, I I like giving people a heads up. Like I was here last time, I talked about Chloe. I give you the heads up, so we can put in what you say. You said it ain't true. Well, what were y'all doing? And, and plus, love and hip hop works for your brand. Yeah, it works for the Hollywood Unlocked mm -hmm. brand. That's, yeah, that's, it does. It's free promo. The first 
slide was Hollywood Unlocks Instagram. Our engagement went up. Keep talking about us. We're going to keep going. And when they took my Instagram down, I said, I'm going to come for every You motherfuckers, I'm coming for everything now. Loving hip hop, wilding out, writing a book, uh, I heart, whatever I can get. Now I'm trying to produce TV. I'm going to do it all. Why'd they take your Instagram down? You know, haters. So, I remember <laughs> the lawsuit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are they going to focus on you? Did that get settled? You? Yes, thank God. Are Which they going to focus on your new show also? Charlamagne, every time I talk about lawsuits, he gets another one. So uh, no, he'd no. Rather not matter of fact, matter of fact, the iHeart bag was horrible. <laughs> I got no money. Charlamagne Shit. is a big bird. Like he is yeah. in people's He's wallets in and pockets. I like to see like people do good, especially. Listen, I, I saw. I remember, like we said, we did the funeral. How long ago was that? That was years ago. That was like a dec over a decade a ago. ago. So I like to see people constantly stick at something they're good at and actually win from it. Now is iHeart going to cover your new deal with iHeart? I mean, is um, Love & Hip Hop going to cover your new deal with iHeart and are they going to follow that journey also? Yeah, so we, so the show, you know, April, so when Melissa was out, April Jones was our co-host for a while. Mm -hmm. you She's know. got a lot going on right now. She has a lot going on, but the thing, the thing about what makes Melissa work is that, you know, we can sit there and I can say, yo, you used to date Antoine Fuqua. I mean, I... This nigga's on my mind. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Sunjata, and we and we would crack up, and it'd be funny, and her not retreat from, you know, not her hiding behind her truth. April, the whole time I was like, "Who are you dating? Are you dating anybody?" And it was nobody, nobody, nobody. And we started seeing signs, so we just knew early on she wasn't gonna work. So that was an easy like exit. Mm -hmm. Plus, we were both in the show, so it made made sense to follow it. Mm -hmm. And then Melissa coming back and the journey on iHeart. Yeah, they've been following that. When's the last time you got threatened for for putting something up? Y'all really want him to get some more lawsuits. No, you mean like a fight? I've been like threatened fight. I ain't mean lawsuits. No, but I haven't been threatened yet. I absolutely know with this new show I'm going to get threatened, but here's the deal. Because <laughs> you be out, too. No, I'm out. I will call the police. I, let me tell you something. <laughs> Give me around the floor. I, I, I'm sending y'all niggas to jail. Y'all want no, to emergency. No, let, Come now. Let's be clear. Run up on me if you want to, because that is great content. I can create a video series out of the journey going to take sending you to jail, suing you, uh, you know, I'm gonna troll you to death, like like Lil Nas, him trolling being gay. Mm -hmm. I said on my Instagram, there's this whole new, there's a new gay uh, level of gay. There's there's the weekend gay, you know, you just gay on the weekend. There's the homeless sexual. Who <laughs> when he said the weekend, yeah, the I homeless. thought you were saying the weekend was gay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a breaking story. No, it's a homeless, no. homeless there's sexual. a homeless sexual that needs a place to live, so he might, you know, suck a dick here and there. And then there's, and then there's the, you know, the the totally trolling gay. Like I'm just gonna troll being gay because being gay is cool. <laughs> And I'm gonna get my cloud up. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going on in the industry <laughs> these days. So yeah. Do you think so, Lil Nas X is really gay? I saw you. I saw you ranting about that. I, no, I just called him ugly like 82 times. He ain't really that ugly. I only trolled him because I felt. And he followed us by the way. Shout out to you. Uh, <laughs> there, he he's a talented kid. You know, he's what a I'm kid. Saying? he is a kid. He's. A, when you over 18, I would say over 19. You're. It's fair oh, game. Is he? 19, like 20, 21, yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20. Oh, okay, okay. And that nigga beat Mariah Carey. He can take a he can take yeah, a blow. Right. right. No pun intended. Whoa. And he, and he also was a troll himself. <laughs> yes, he knows the game. He's mm -hmm. like Soldier Boy. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about since we're talking about age and everything about Diddy and Lori Harvey? <laughs> uh, Why you laugh like that, man? Cause I could, man. Okay. Come on, be honest. So I called Alex Avant, who's Clarence Avant's son, who manages Lori Harvey, and I said, hey, man, the streets are talking, saying that Lori and Diddy <laughs> are together. What's up? And he was like, oh, bro, come on. <laughs> it ain't true. And then all this shit pops up on the shade room. See, that's that goes back to, like, giving people a heads up, and then you get played. Then you just don't give people a heads up anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, somebody on my team said that she used to date uh, Justin Combs also. Allegedly, yeah. Listen, keep it in the family. I, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with the age difference, though. Oh, right? the age difference. No, no, she's a grown woman. Yeah, she's, she's a good girl, too. Are there people sliding in your DMs? I Since this iHeart deal, yeah. yeah I know somebody in this room. I know somebody in this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th somebody in this room thinks you're handsome, Jace. Who? Who thinks I'm handsome? I'm, I'm going to let you figure it out. I'm a married man. Charlamagne's a married man. I'm going to let you figure He's it out. He's taken. That is three. Well, Yee Ye doesn't count because she's not in the well, running. Well, listen, it's not a woman, exactly. <laughs> okay, so Yee doesn't Ooh. count. I'm gonna let you figure it out. Listen, keep the you made keep, eye contact with twice. Show <laughs> I, I'm making eye contact with everybody. <laughs> All right, <laughs> stop fucking. But anybody up. good in your DMs? No, you no. Would... I think you know. After I said the whole Jesse Smollett thing last time, mm -hmm. I think people are like, "Yeah, I'm not fucking with him." <laughs> yeah, you an ass. Why are you making that man? Up, but up, I don't up, even want. Who you talking about? Him over there? Who? Who? I don't know. <laughs> who? 
Eddie's he's married. married. Yeah. Eddie married. You close though. Marriage don't mean shit. Well, you warm. let me ask you this. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you warm. It's a hot potato. Do you like beards? <laughs> Do I like beards? Like beards. guys with beards. Like beards. Not beards. Like not, the guys, not who guys who be- that are pretending. Oh, you guys are throwing him under the bus. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> no, I'm just asking a question. This literally came out of nowhere. This has nothing, no context. Listen, I, I listen. I'm an equal opportunist. As long as you have good hygiene and mm-hmm. like you know whoever else you fuck with on the side ain't gonna be on my Instagram. I'm cool. That's right. You got good hygiene. There's only two people I've heard him say he got a crush on. It was you and Liz. Lizzo. Oh, Lizzo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not fucking with y'all. <laughs> Yo, she, Lizzo out here doing her thing, though. I love and Lizzo. And this is what I understand about the internet. People are so unfair. Like, I get fat shamed, you know, because I'm not skinny at all. But then Lizzo is praised. <laughs> Lizzo is praised for being overweight. And she's like, I mean, she's like not even like discreet fat, which is not a bad thing. She just put all my fat out there fat. Yeah, yeah but you know what? She there. does get body shamed also. She just chooses to be really positive. I love it. And the message that she sends out because there are definitely people saying negative things. But I think when you put that positivity out there so much, there's going to be a she, lot more positive She's, she's my hero. She's actually one of my favorite people right now. And I, I love her whole movement. I love how she's embraced it. And I mean, you if you attack Lizzo, yeah, I think you're just a hater. And you see she goes through it too. I mean, she's done posts herself where she talks about dealing with her own issues with depression and, and feeling a certain way. So yeah. everyone goes through it yeah. when you're in that spotlight. Well, I don't though because keep talking about me. I Just keep keep on talking about me. I actually want to interview Nicki Minaj. You guys have had the privilege of doing that. Is that a fun interview? A few times. Yeah. That's I true. mean, I haven't seen Nicki in a while. Yeah. Yeah, Nicki, Nicki was fun when she came up here. She cursed me and yeah one time, but she, mm-hmm. she's pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. She's a, uh, <laughs> She's invited on the show. I, I want to. Why do you want to interview Nicki Minaj? I just think it would be fun. Yeah, she gonna check you first and foremost. That's though. okay. We will check each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's an equal opportunity mm-hmm. checking. Mm-hmm. The Bob still on your ass? No, they, they, the Barb's have left me alone. The Ariana Grande fans have left me alone, okay. and the Beehive has left me alone. Everybody's leaving me alone. Everything is good Why right now. Why is the Beehive saying? bothering you? Because my team, Keisha, oh, was from the Rock them. Nation brunch. You love Beyonce well, though. No, the Rock Nation brunch. <laughs> they do. They say I was chasing her around the party. That shit was funny. I ain't gonna lie. It was I was kind of, <laughs> a little bit. No, but my team, we get so much content from mm-hmm. people. They submit us stuff all the time. That you know, they they'll get excited and just post some shit up. So my team got a picture of Beyonce's twins. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember that. And we were like oh, excited, yeah. like, oh my gosh, she finally shared the kids. So I'm like, oh, the kids are so cute. Put the put it up. And then the next thing I know, Newsweek is calling, and they're like, how did you steal these photos? I'm like, steal these photos? They know you were in the house and took pictures. They, 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 they put pictures. online that I was sneaking in their house. First of all, if I get in Beyonce, <laughs> this is crazy, right? That's what First, you did? You got into the house? No. Listen, I'm just on, on one week, I'm chasing her around the party. The next week, I'm in her house taking photos of the kids off wow. the wall. I'm just... Did you get a cease and desist from anybody? A Rock Nation? No, but shout, team? shout out to uh, Yvette No Shore. She called. Mm-hmm. She the said, oh, baby, baby, I need you to take that down. I go, what happened? She goes, that that wasn't authorized. I said, okay, cool. I took it down. But it's kind of too late then. It was everywhere. Yeah, everybody then took it from there by then. Not oh, really, because I, I didn't see it nowhere after Hollywood Unlocked. What? I hit Newsweek up. Yeah. I was like, yeah, and I went off on them, and they, they, I thought they would take it down. They just, like, retracted and said, <laughs> Jason Lee said he wasn't there. And so, still there. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, what about you and Cardi B are really good friends also. Yeah. How did that friendship develop? Um, Cardi, I mean, like I said, I was a fan of Cardi's before the fame and it just, you know, continued on her success. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm happy for her. I keep telling her I'm waiting for her and Meg Thee Stallion to do a song. I know Meg and Nicki got a song. Yeah, 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 yeah it's about to come out, the yeah. remix. I heard exclusive. Wouldn't it have been great to see all of them on that song together? Yes. I mean, yeah. Diamond and Princess was up here and they had an idea for a new ladies night record I think would be mm-hmm. dope with all of them. I saw Diamond and Princess. They have some really colorful hair. Listen, let me ask you something about Beyonce, okay. right? Um, <laughs> the dude in there who got a crush on you, he said that Beyonce was overrated. Who said that? And then he said Drake what had... He said Drake was a bigger star wait, 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 than Beyonce. Wait, wait, what did you say? This is a big, I don't want to... saying your mouth. currently, <laughs> I think in current, the current climate, Drake is a bigger star. Bigger than what? Than Beyonce. Beyonce. More, more relevant right now as far as music and putting out product, I would say. So I'm going to just say this. First of all, that you know, the Bible talks about one sin that's not forgivable and it's blasphemy. <laughs> uh, I went to see Beyonce at Coachella and we enjoyed I mean it was magnificent performance, homecoming or whatever. We didn't know she was filming a whole album and a movie mm. at the same time. Yeah, Her work yeah, yeah. ethic is beyond like nobody can question that, right? Drake undoubtedly is one of the best. Um, I'll tell you a quick Drake story about how I got thrown out of this party last time before I, uh, <laughs> after come here. 
Tristan Thompson, that bitch ass nigga. That's another one I would love to have on my you show. You just be too. going on just random. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm having flashbacks. You got Beyonce right that now. That motherfucker had me escorted out in public. We're gonna all talk right. about all that. Let's talk about probably get back to that, but let's talk about who's bigger for drum. Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Drake would say that though. Don't he have a yeah. song called Beyonce? Exactly. Yeah, something like that. She ain't got Dr- a song the girls called love Drake. Beyonce. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awkward. That would. <laughs> now, why did Drake? Kick so, drum. You just don't know what bigger is. That's all. I do. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! This is the best. <laughs> this is the best show ever. You don't like so right right what you said? No, I'm playing. Oh, right. Wait, but are you Middle Eastern? No, Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> what do I think he did in Puerto Rican guy? No, because this man Lisa slid in my DMs last night. Woo! I'm going to hit his ass when I get back to L.A. Okay, so what yeah, happened? Drake, we have Drake now. Okay, no, we off Drake. Drake is definitely you said like... You got the kicked out of his Oh, no, party. Drake didn't. Shout out to Drake. Drake, I went to a Drake party in London, and he actually... I mean, I think it was uncomfortable that I was there, but he was like, you know, we had a conversation. I've known Drake before he got famous when he, you know, they had no money. And I told him, hey, you can have my phones. I ain't here to report. I'm just here to have a good time. Fast forward. Uh, Serge Ibaka, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Carrie won- Hilson's ex. <laughs> That's yeah. how. I, yeah, okay. I mean, sorry, that you know, was years world ago. World champion yeah. basketball player. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> since we're talking gossip, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's so messy in here. But he he won the championship, you know, uh, the t- Toronto Raptors. So he invited me. Drake threw them a party, and he invited me. So I was excited. I went out. You know, I got dressed, I get there, and as soon as we walk in, Tristan's at the bar, and I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and now, that was probably the most awkward running, because I ain't seen him since, you know, he cheated on his uh, baby mama's sisters. And you broke friend. the story. Oh, absolutely. Black men don't cheat. Tristan's Canadian, though, so he don't count. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that <laughs> nigga was standing at the bar, so I go, oh, shit, you know. Uh, and then my phone rang, so I go, okay, I'll be right back. So I get the phone. I go to walk outside to talk on the phone because hey. I'm meeting somebody else. And they kind of, you know how somebody just kind of, like, you feel an arm behind you, but like an usher in church? They was just ushering me out the door. So I said, hold on a minute. I said, what was, what's that? What's going on? So they said, oh, man, you know, this is a private party. We're going to have to ask you to leave. So people outside are like, hey, Jason, can you get me in? I'm like, how can I get you in? Nigga, I'm getting kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I ain't never been kicked out, so I left and... Surge and then we're like, come back, we'll get you back in. But yeah, he had me escorted. I didn't know him and Drake were good friends like that. Did but you go I, back in or no? You know, I left because I didn't want to be a, the focus of all right, that. Right, what are you, you going to do? Fight What's your way back Canadian in for a party? Connection. Like, stop. But what? And, and Tristan then, from Toronto? He from Canada, I know that much. Is he? Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Canada. I, I mean, I, I did that after I started this whole Track Tristan ha- hashtag on uh, Instagram. Track Tristan? Track Tristan, yeah. Why, so you can understand why he had you kicked out. Oh, well, yeah. it was after I got kicked out oh. I did but that. But there were so many people reporting on They Tristan broke the story, also. though, yeah. No, I know, Jason but still, no, it's, no, it's, no. it's the truth. Jason if broke that but, story. But if yes, it's the did. truth, how can you be mad about something that's true? But here's my message to no the intended. world. Please stop doing dirt. Live in your truth. Mm-hmm. If you take a picture of me on a date with a nigga, that is not news. That is just a fact. Mm-hmm. Like, everything mm-hmm. I do is out there. So if you're not doing dirt, you have nothing to worry about. You do dirt, you get caught. I mean... And what, then, if the, what if the guy doesn't want people to know that he's gay, but he wants to go out with you? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't put the guys out there that you I date. You don't out people. No, I don't out people. That's one thing I don't do. I don't out people. So if you are a rapper... Hit me up. Board up. <laughs> DJ. Nigga getting out of Slide prison. I'm yeah, equal. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, listen, yeah. I don't have no... I, you yeah. know, they say, like, what's your standard? I told Saweetie, you want an eight-figure nigga, I'll take a four-figure nigga. Because at the end of the day, I know how to make eight... We'll figure out the eight figures. Mm-hmm. Or some, wait, have I, no, eight figures is a lot. Seven, maybe, but, you know, <laughs> four or five, we'll figure four it out. Four is a very... I mean, I mean, I, listen, I think everybody should be happy and you date who you like, yeah. but four figures is low. I mean, the, the, you can make 90000 That's four. I mean, that's the, five. There's a lot of women in the world who stay at home and take care of their kids and don't make money because their their husband's the breadwinner and that's mm-hmm. their choice. I mean, mm-hmm. I would not have a problem from being in a relationship like that. I love going out and getting money. Now, in an awkward situation where you see Tristan Thompson at an event, would you have said hello before you, if you didn't get kicked out? Would you go up and be like, how you doing? No, nah, I would have walked <laughs> up Why'd to... Why'd you pat like that, Yee? What would you pat? I don't know, how you doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> that was, that was, was a, it was a pound, Good kind play. of. Uh-huh. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't have patted him on his ass because he's not attractive. <laughs> But I would have gone up to him and said, "Hey Tristan, what's up, man? I would love to interview you. I would, I, I would, I would <laughs> no love." No shame. No shame. And you had no security. That day I didn't. Well, hey, they had caught me slipping. But here's the deal: I, I tell them, number one, do your research. I'm from Stockton, California. Just last night, my family was in a group text texting me because they were watching Love and Hip Hop. Yo, let us know we need to come to LA. I'm like, for a one, we're like, no, we're not doing it. I'm not worried about nobody running up on me. If they do get me, catch me slipping, which I'm sure at some point I will get caught slipping. It's cool. I mean, listen, I don't think that you're. I don't think that you can be taken serious 
as a commentator, radio personality, moderator, until you get punched in the face. Especially <laughs> if you spicy. If you spicy and you got a, a strong POV, I think you got to get punched in the face. It's happened. I've been punched twice. Have you? Yes. Joe <laughs> Budden's been punched. Like, you got to get punched. Jim okay. Rome. Remember Jim Rome? Wait, so I'm going to get punched? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Wendy Williams Maybe never got not, punched, though. did she? She got ran up on. But she didn't get punched. Yo, I've been hanging with Wendy, Well, man. Angie Martinez? She got punched? No, she no, punched Angie Wendy. Was, yeah, she did? Still. Yeah. You never read Angie's book? No. Oh, you got to read Angie's book. Yeah, they got into a, a yeah. fist of cuffs. Books? Really? Mm-hmm. Um, I've been hanging with Wendy lately. She, Man, I wish I could have saw y'all back together. I mean, just together. I'm waiting for her to come here or you to go there. At some point, I, we just need to see that. Well, you know her ex-husband is back working with her That's as her not business true. manager. No, no, That's no, not it's true. not. No, it's Wendy not is living her. I'm not going to tell her business because, you know, I have an agreement that whatever we all do on private time is private, but I would say Wendy is out here living her life and she's... Not back together, but business no. manager. It's not true. I don't think so. Listen, mm-hmm. I've heard some rumblings about a possible TV situation over <laughs> Who there. Who told you that? With Deb Barr, Deb Mar Mercury. Listen, we are having conversations. We're talking with them. We're talking with we're talking with anybody who wants to get into business. Mm-hmm. I, I was telling my agent the other day. He he said, uh, oh, I, well, you know, maybe you're not ready for a talk just yet." Who said? Who what? Mm-hmm. The, nobody thought I was ready for syndicated radio either. Right. I feel like when when are you ready? When when people see your talent, they either like it or don't like it. But until they see it, there's no time to evaluate. So I'm going for everything I can get right now. I just had a, a meeting yesterday with uh, Big Fish about a pr- development deal to Salute develop. To Big Fish, yeah, Those are my people them. over there. Man, they getting money. Yeah, yes, they, they, yeah, they, yeah, they did say some good stuff. Those are my guys. There's actually an audition going on today that you should be a part of. That's probably why you're here with your sneaky here goes ass. Some gay shit. What is it? What is it? What's no, the show it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, yeah. Well, there is, yeah, I was supposed to do one uh, Friday, but with the rescheduling. Got you, got you. I got would you, do a talk you. show. Mm-hmm. I think it's fun. I'm doing everything I enjoy doing. Like, nothing I do, I don't enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's going on on this season of Love and Hip Hop with you? Well, this season... Uh, How many I, episodes in? Man, we're uh, we're almost done. I think really? like a couple more weeks left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, um, so this season, uh, when I was there before on season two and three, you know, was I, I think my role was pretty much the gay, messy blogger. Like, that was it. Like I, And I felt it, too, after a while. I was like, wait a minute. There's more to being gay. There's more than being a blogger. There's more than being messy, whatever. I felt like there was no depth to me. People didn't really know who I was. So uh, when I started, you know, getting into when 2019 came around, I, I was like, this is a transformative year. I want to be more transparent as a person. I'm going to start writing my book, and I want people to, to see me for who I am. And so they approached me about being able to tell my story, and that was that's the death of my brother. So I, I think you're going to see a lot more of my personal life, my family. Um, you're going to learn more about my brother, Rodney, who died. And so, yeah, I mean, I was really happy with the season. Okay. Well, we look forward to hearing this show that uh, yeah. premieres August 17th. And it's going. Um, I, my prediction is that uh, it'll start on weekends, and then it'll start making its way on morning shows across America via iHeart on the West Coast. I mean, I would love to be an evening show, though. Yeah, like, evening, evening show, really? I think, would Breakfast be really Club good. Breakfast Club in the morning, us in the evening, man, what? Really? Because yeah, there's, I think we need something like that, too. Yeah, like when you're driving evenings. home from work, you want to hear all now, the bullshit going I will on. say this. I think that afternoon shows in radio have, they're, got, not, they're not as big as they, they used to out. be. You got to oh, think really? back in the day, you had, you had Wendy Williams, Angie, Angie Martinez, you had the Dale Hughley's, Michael Bathens, like afternoon shows were a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they... I don't think they do that anymore. I think that's something that should come back. As well, hopefully, well. we can bring it back. Mm-hmm. That would be dope. I, and, and again, just shout out to Charlamagne I, and, and all of you for letting me come up here, but you for making that phone call. Again, I said last show, like black media, we don't really support each other a lot. I mean, a lot of us have been having conversations about how we can unite over core things that we can really control the narrative mm-hmm. in, in, um, in black media outside of you know our own individual brands. But making the phone call and actually asking them to take a look at us, a serious look, really led to us having real conversations about the show that's coming. So I appreciate that. And, I mean, I'm excited. And, you know, if you run up on me, you're going to go to jail. So <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. Well, congratulations. Word. Thank you so much. Drum, you need parting words? What is wrong with you, bro? I, I ain't dated a Puerto Rican in a long time either. I'm hey. not hey. <laughs> my, my ex wasn't. He didn't ask you if you were gay. Was that wasn't a concern. My ex wasn't gay. gay. It is, ex wasn't it's gay. not about being gay. It's about, being gay. it's about catching a vibe. Exactly. <laughs> and you guys were not here to out people like we said earlier. Catching a vibe. You're a nice guy, but I ain't catching that vibe. We're not here to out people, so don't do that. You said what? We're not here to out people, so don't do that. No, he just said that Jason was handsome. He said he was a nice guy. It's okay. We can continue this. I hope you get your Antoine Fuqua interview. Yeah, yeah, nigga, I'm coming for you. What do you drink? (laughs) What?
Water. That's right. <laughs> hey, here you go. Hey, whatever you need, Trump. He got it. <laughs> it's Jason Lee. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs>